Well, good morning and welcome to St. Anne's and St. John's Episcopal Church's Sunday morning worship here in Lowell. Thank you for coming to this service of morning prayer, the 19th Sunday after Pentecost. Both parish churches are currently offering in-person Sunday worship that follow very stringent safety protocols. And we realize that for some people, it's uncomfortable to participate in gathering, indoor gatherings at this time, or you may not feel well enough to come to worship. We will continue to do and offer these online Sunday services until the danger of contagion has passed. Some of the canticles and prayers that we are using in this morning prayer service are taken from the Church of England and their book, Daily Prayer, and other parts of this service are from the Episcopal Church's Book of Common Prayer. So let us take a moment and prepare ourselves for worship. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. May Christ the day star dawn in our hearts and triumph over the shades of night. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and be glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed are you, creator of all. To you be praise and glory forever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation, may we rejoice in this day you have made as we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep. Open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night is past. The day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and one mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The psalm this morning is from 106. Hallelujah, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercies endure forever. Who can declare the mighty acts of the Lord or show forth all his praise? Happy are those who act with justice and always do what is right. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor you have for your people. 
and visit me with your saving help, that I may see the prosperity of your elect and be glad with the gladness of your people, that I may glory in your inheritance. We have sinned as our forebearers did. We have none wrong and dealt wickedly. Israel made a bull calf at Horeb and worshiped a molten image. And so they exchanged their glory for the image of an ox that feeds on grass. They forgot God, their savior, who had done great things in Egypt, wonderful deeds in the land of Ham, and fearful things at the Red Sea. So he would have destroyed them had not Moses, his chosen, stood before him in the breach to turn away his wrath from consuming them. Glory be to the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, and is now, and ever shall be. Amen. The Old Testament reading this morning is from the book of Exodus. When people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered around Aaron and said to him, Come, make gods for us who shall go before us. As for this, Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. Aaron said to them, take off the gold rings that are on the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to Aaron. He took the gold from them, formed it in a mold, and cast an image of a calf. And they said, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it, and early the next day, and offered burnt offerings and brought sacrifices of well-being. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to revel. The Lord said to Moses, go down at once. Your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshiped it and sacrificed to it and said, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone so that my wrath may burn hot against them and I may consume them. And of you, I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord, his God, and said, O oh Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say, it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from your fierce wrath. Change your mind and do not bring disaster upon your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven. And all this land that I've promised, 
I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring on his people. The word of the Lord. A song of the new creation. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, that they might declare my praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. A reading from the Gospel of St. Matthew. Once more Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed some. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. And then he said to his slaves, the wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. The slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad, so the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe, and he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. The king said to his attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Here ends the reading. A Song of the Lamb. Let us rejoice and exult and give glory and homage to our God. Salvation and glory and power belong to our God, whose judgments are true and just. Praise our God, all you his servants, all who fear him, both small and great. The Lord our God, the Almighty, reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. Amen. Let us rejoice and exult and give glory and homage to our God. In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The opening words in the gospel today, the kingdom of heaven may be compared, is like and unlike and sounds odd to us. 
because we live in a different system of government. A kingdom requires a king or a queen, and even in scripture, the king is not one who functions in ways that are familiar to us. Most kings we know of in our time are constitutionally governed and do not have total authority. Jesus is speaking of a new reality in which the creator God is the only authority and God runs the whole process. N.T. Wright in one of his books, Jesus and the Victory of God, gives us a summary of what he's talking about when he talks about the kingdom of God. A new exodus is underway. All humanity is summoned to take part in the restoration of God's rule and to be part of the repentance which is part of the return. He goes on to say that all are summoned to take part in the restoration of God's rule and to be part of the repentance. I'm sorry. He goes on to say that we cannot depend on our heritage to vindicate us. John the Baptist said the same thing on the riverbank. God can raise up children from these very stones if needed. So the emphasis here is that God will judge all who refuse God's authority. And Jesus is saying that all who oppose God are doomed to be erased by their own choice at the end of time. The banquet which Jesus uses to teach this helps to remind us or should remind us of Israel's Passover and the Seder meal and the supper of the lamb in the revelation to John indeed to many meals and they should remind us that God constantly nourishes us with God's grace and mercy. When we reflect on some of the elements within the parable, we notice that the guest list is all inclusive. No one is excluded for any reason. And we need to be aware that if we are a welcoming part of the body of Christ, that we are to be similarly open to welcoming everyone, especially to the table of the Lord. But we also notice in the parable that some who are invited have a to-do list and have no time for this wedding or it seems have no time for God. So they choose to refuse and they don't go. And judgment falls on them. In like manner, if we refuse the call of God and do it again and again, we may at some point hear God say, okay, have your own way. And he will cast us out and we will be erased from existence. God continues to invite God's people into communion with himself and endeavors to build a community centered around Jesus and the Lord's table. To refuse that invitation, to refuse that participation over and over again is to choose darkness and not the light. Many have been baptized and have been confirmed, but do not honor their promise to follow Christ, to come together week by week for worship, nor do they regularly and consistently work, pray, and give for the spread of God's kingdom. To fail to carry out these responsibilities, and these are defined 
in the Catechism of the Episcopal Church in the prayer book. To fail to carry out these responsibilities are to become the man in the parable who shows up without a wedding garment. And the king says, where is your wedding garment? Which is to say, where is the evidence of your active participation in the community centered around Jesus and the table? We're to give more than lip service. We can say, yeah, I'm a Christian and do nothing to confirm it in fact. So, okay, God loves us. Jesus gave his life to save us. And by baptism and confirmation, we have become part of the body of Christ by intention. But if that's it and nothing more, we are failing to act on the promises we have made in that baptism and in that confirmation. So we need to ask ourselves, have we encountered Jesus? And if we have, are we changed by that encounter? Has the Holy Spirit become our guardian and our guide as we live our daily lives, serving one another, serving the poor, looking after the left out and the broken? Is it true? Remember Zacchaeus, that man up in the tree, he was so short he couldn't see Jesus when he came along the street. So he climbed up in the tree so he could see, oh, who is this guy is the prophet, wow. So up the tree he went. And when Jesus comes where Zacchaeus is, he stops and looks up and says, Zacchaeus, come down. I'm having lunch at your house today. Come on, get, let's get on with it. So Zacchaeus, in the course of the lunch and conversations with Jesus, apparently, resolves that having met Jesus, that he will, in fact, change his way of life and redistribute much of the wealth that he has acquired as a tax collector in order to aid others and to make reparations for abuses that he has carried out in the past. And we may remember Jesus said, there is joy in heaven over the repentance of one sinner. Zacchaeus is a good role model. So this parable should lead us to think about how Jesus can become our everyday hero and how his presence can daily inform our hearts and minds in all that we try to do. Let us together resolve that by grace, you and I continue, will continue to bring forth the fruits of good work as best we can according to the gifts that God has given us. Amen.
Let us rehearse together our baptismal creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In peace, let us pray to Jesus our Lord, who ever lives to make intercession for us. Savior of the world, be present in all places of suffering and pain and bring hope even in the darkest night. Inspire us to continue your work of reconciliation today. Lord of the Church, empower by your spirit all Christian people, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, Presiding Bishop of the Episcopal Church, Alan and Gail, our bishops, Ennis, our rector, Anne, Richard, and Sarah, Sarah, assisting priests, and the work of your church in this and every land. Give us grace to proclaim the gospel joyfully in word and deed. Shepherd and guardian of our souls, guide and enable all who lead and serve this community and our nation, and those to, on whom we depend for our daily needs. Grant that we may seek the peace and welfare of this place. Great physician, stretch out your hand to bring comfort, wholeness, and peace to victims of COVID-19 and all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Fill us with compassion that we may be channels of your healing love. Conqueror of death, remember for good those whom we love but see no longer. Help us to live this day in the sure and certain hope of your eternal victory. Let us commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Eternal God, you crown the year with your goodness and you give us the fruits of the earth in their season. Grant that we may use them to your glory, for the relief of those in need, and for our own well-being. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that your grace may always precede and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The General Thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. 
but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen.